to keep quiet and you do all the honor because it's our pleasure to hear the story of your life journey because I know you've made significant outcomes in your life journey. So, sir, please, by all means, thank you very much. Well, thank you, the organizers of SM Fest. Thank you for inviting me. And let me apologize ahead of time. If you see us rushing, I did say to them, they gave me a, they said, be here for 9.15, and you have to start 9.30 and go 10.30. And I was here 9 o'clock. But no problem. Um, I will I'll participate and everything. For me, what I would prefer, instead of telling my story or telling anything, in order to save time, can we do question and answer? Because when people are asking you questions, which there's no prepared test, you're likely to be able to communicate and make more meaning. So I would like to take questions from them. I'd like to take questions from you. Yes. It rather is. than tell any story, because any Thank story you can so be much for story. cutting the protocols. So I'm going to start with a question. I was speaking to a young lady in the audience before we arrived this morning, and she was talking to me about being a fresh graduate and trying to start a side gig. And at the same time, not wanting to deviate from her career path because she had a job offer that was away from her career path. And I thought to say, if I bring it back to who you were, with your background in philosophy, with being um, an astute businessman from school, uh, for those of you who doesn't know, he was a landlord in school and a known businessman and a big time businessman in school. So how, how were you able to juggle that Path. So first of all, being a superstar in your academic and at the same time manage a business as a student and grow it up to this point. Please, by all means. You asked the question. Yes. Is about so the question who, who is I am. So what? who you are and how you are able to build yourself in the area of business to this point as a student for start. Well, let me do it very quickly. In these days where we need to introduce ourselves properly. My names are Mr. Strictly Mr. No other attachments. Strictly Mr. Peter Gregory Ongobasi Obi. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian who have never in any way applied for citizen of any other country. I was born a Nigerian. I believe in Nigeria. I was born in Onicha, July 19th, 1961. I went to three primary schools in Onicha, all located within the same, in Anambra State, starting from Santa Maria, then went to Holy Trinity and St. Augustine Primary School, from there, went to Christ the King College on a channel. From Christ the King College, where I was admitted in September 1973, we are the first set to transit from December to the new school date. So September 19. 73 to 1978. In that year, as you can see from my CV already, I sat for the two exams. I sat for the WIAC, and I had in December, I sat for the GCE. It's two certificates as shown in the site to show how I was able to be admitted into. In year 1980, September, I was admitted to the Department of Philosophy, University of Nigeria and Sokan. And I was there to 84. Left, did my youth service in Edo State, finished 
And of course, I've had the opportunity of going to other schools. I'm sure that if you Google, we'll be mentioning my CV, like going for other trainings in Harvard, Cambridge, Oxford, and everything, and all that. And I'm today, I'll say, okay, when they talk about game, game changer, and I said, well, one of the courses I did in Harvard is changing the game. You know, so that's my little background. If you want further, maybe from there I went into a business. I'm a trader. I believe in trading. I live in Onicha. I still live in Onicha. I came from Onicha this morning. You know, I believe in it. Because it gives me joy to stay within the trading community. I was born in a family where my father and my mother are traders. So I was, from day one, I was a trader. And I like trading. When I was in primary school, the only reason why my mother moved me from a school where I was in Holy Trinity to go and live with his sister in St. Augustine's, no more by Nam, which is outside on which is because I will always want to leave going to, you know, I want to go to school, but I want to trade. So I will always finish school and come to where she's trading. She wanted me to go to school. By the time I was in CKC, I was already started trading. Everybody that knows me in CKC know I was a trader. I was doing little, little supplies to supermarkets and everything. And of course, by the time I got to Nsoka, those who know me in Nsoka knew I was a, a businessman. I would say I was a bigger trader then in Nsoka, trying to involve in supermarkets, grocery items, which is what I learned from my parents. So this is my little background as a trader. People say, how can you combine doing business and going to school? And I said to them, how can you combine so many other things people combine in their life? Maybe they're in school, they have to go round and round, partying, for example, which is not wrong, from time to time. How do they go around while and away their time? If you concentrate, if you go to classes, if you do the things that I do, as a student at the University of Nigeria, Asuka, everybody knows that Peter Obi is in school Monday to Thursday. You might not likely see me Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because I have to go to my little shop and calculate what they're doing. And because of my background, one thing I've been able to learn is that because I was following my mother, calculating things is easier for me. Today, if you write anything, I might not remember the language, but if there's a figure there, I'll remember the figure. And that's what it is for me. That's my a little bit of my background. Mm. But how do you cope up about business? That's right. It is a difficult thing. But I can tell you, whatever you're determined to do, you put your mind and your time to it. I can tell you, you will certainly achieve. But you have to believe in it, be serious about it, spend your time and energy in it. Starting a business, especially today in Nigeria, is difficult. But there's so much opportunity that every day people tell me, how are we going to do this? I said, it's possible. It just requires determination. It requires sacrifice. And you will get there. 
Thank you very much, sir. Um, please, a round of applause once again on this question. Everybody in the audience are mostly young entrepreneurs like me. So, and the question around business, I, I'm going to ask you, at what point did you decide to buy shares? Because from research, you have the, you hold the highest shareholder for a bank. How did you start this? What, what was the pivotal, interesting thing that pushed you to decide that you would do this? And you've done it for over the years and have increased your stake in that bank. How did you do this, sir? Oh, is it something that I don't like telling that story? <laughs> I'm a trader. I've never been involved in a corporate world. But I, I don't know how to answer this. I went to a bank. But let me tell you, I went to a bank. I'm a customer of this bank, but I'm a small customer. Very small customer. And I go to this bank regularly. You know, I'm somebody, even to today, I don't do electronic banking. Surprising. Because um, I like going to the bank. So I'm seeing who I'm talking to. So that nobody tells me stories. Somebody did that. You're not seeing your money again. So I, I, I make it. I went to bank one of these days. The manager was busy doing something else. Yeah. You people now in the bank where you go, ah, of course, they tend to you. When it was just few banks, they won't talk to you. So this manager was busy talking to the big people and everything. And suddenly he says, oh, he wants to go to break. Mm. And I say, manager, we've been here since about nine o'clock. And now you're saying you're going to break. You won't believe it. The manager said, as root, that I can close my account and go somewhere else. Right. And I left the bank. I decided I'm going to buy the share of this bank. Every year, whatever I get, I'm going to put it in this bank. Buy the shares of this bank. So I started buying the shares, small, small. Every day I buy small of it. Every day it was my first time. I started buying small of it. And eventually, I started borrowing money from this bank. So I realized two things. The blood of my business is finance. And these people hold the blood. And I give them money and they make profit. And they share it to themselves. And look at what this, how this man treated me. Once I started doing that, everything started. And I started picking. I never worked in the bank. People think I worked in the bank. Never. Wow. Not one day. One day, an MD of a bank who regularly comes to my store. If you know me, when I was trading, I was in Lagos, I was in Balogu. When I mean being a trader, I'm a trader. I don't do any other thing. If you come to my house in the morning, my office in the morning, my shop, I'm there from morning till night. In fact, I was telling somebody a story this morning. I told him, I said, let me tell you. One day I had two people fighting in, my, in front of my shop. And everybody comes there and says, ah, Peter, you're sitting down here. And these people are fighting, trying to kill the other. I didn't even say anything. I said, hey, leave my shop. I didn't come to Lagos to separate fights. I came to sell goods. If they want to buy something, I'll sell to them. If they want to fight, that's their business. They know where they met themselves and what is their problem. When they finish fighting, they want to buy anything, I'll sell it to them. And that's it. Everybody knows. I'm in my shop 7 a.m. And I don't leave till 7 p.m. I don't go to any other thing. In Lagos, I just sell my goods and go home. So, in this my shop, the banks come. One day, an MD of a bank came to me and said, Peter, we want you to come to our board. I said, me? He said, yes. Because whenever we come here, what we discuss with you, you can make 
an impact on our board. I said, okay. I'm not my little of this year. I'm not been invited to come to the board. And I entered a board where everybody is above 60 years and I was 30 something years. And I come to meetings and I listen to their meetings. I got involved where they lend money. I see how they lend money to people. I see how to do this to people. And I found out that they're lending money to the wrong people. And I'll argue with them. I say, listen, this man, listen to him. If you give him this money, he won't pay. This man has a genuine business. And that has remained with me today. Anybody who will pay the back debt, I will tell you. Anybody who won't pay, I will tell you. Just looking at the person. By the time he finishes his business presentation, I will tell you this person will pay. And this person won't pay. And I got the bank. One day, the bank was, the chairman left, and they were looking for a new chairman. I was campaigning for somebody. They said, you will be the chairman. You are the number one contributor here. I'm involved in that bank by, again, I said, by default. But I tell people, once I started investing in stocks and shares, it became for me something I have to do, not just in Nigeria, but globally. Saving little of it. It will shock you what you will see. I started saving in a portfolio years back. This was about 1990. Started putting 100 and something dollars in the portfolio a month. Today, that is of nearly a million dollars. And I was not feeling it because it was small. And some of you might be difficult now to start. Because I can tell you, October 1983, $100 is just about 60 naira. Yeah. October 1993. But I used to tell people, by the time I left university in 1984, in Osaka, I will have my, in my balance in the university about 500 to 600 naira, 1,000 naira, which was about a million dollars. You ask me how did I become a landlord? Savannah Bank then, as a student, was looking for a rural branch in Ubola for in Soka and somewhere where they do rice farming in Anambra State. Mm. And I, the manager, was very close. He was doing a course in Osoka. And he said, let's go and see how we can build. It cost me to build that house, buy the land, build the entire house, about 18000 something. And they paid me five-year rent, 35000 seven, 7000 per year. So I, from day one. But now, if you have 500,000 naira, you won't even buy $400. But this was a million dollars then. Wow. At that time, minimum wage was 125 naira, $200. You go to J. Allen, you buy a, a Volkswagen, 2,700 naira, a 504 was so yes. It's all changed. But it, it is too good for you who are starting business today. I can assure you, you can still replicate the same thing by starting small, put away some, some of your little income, Forget about it. 
just go and do unit trust locally, internationally, even as little as this, you will not believe what it will be tomorrow. Okay. So this is crazy. Forgive me. <laughs> or rather, I would say this is motivational and inspirational from what you have said. But I'm going to pause here to allow the audience who are burning with questions. At least we'll take three questions, one from this side, one from this side, and one from that side. So we can be able to shut down and round up quickly because we're pressed with time. So if you have a question, quickly come to the stage. Three people, raise your hand and come forward quickly. First three to come forward. So do we have a mic for them? All right. So we'd like to take the questions, hear them all, and then we can bunch it together. If that works. Yes, please. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my question goes to you, sir. At what point in time do you think it's hard time I have achieved this. Let me achieve the next goal. At what point in time do you put your goals aligned? Because some people would think, okay, I've achieved this. Let me remain this. Let me just stay here. And wouldn't know how to move on to the next step. So at what point in time do you move to the next step of the things you wanted to achieve? Thank you very much. So we'll take the second question and see if we can watch. Okay. okay. Um, your Excellency, it's a privilege to be doing this like to, um, with you this morning. And I really want to say thank you for making our time to um, come do this with we, the young one. And before I ask this question, sir, if you do me this favor, I really came here with a specific gift to you, sir. And I really want to give you this gift, if you don't mind, sir. I got my issues, I admit, Come on now. You got some things that hold you back. But we are acting like we change. Game changers. When you see them, you know. Looking to blame for what we like. Amazing. Please give them a clap. <laughs> Put your hands together for him. Thank you. So the next question. Third question. Okay, so I have a question. Oh no, he he oh, has a question. Has a question. And so quickly, the question is um. I really want to know for um, those young persons who are actually um, looking forward to doing great things in business or in other sphere, you know, in other area of um, their endeavor. I really want to ask sincerely and genuinely, sir, what advice would you really, knowing what you've known, being exposed to what you've been exposed to, what advice would you really give to your? Let's say you're 26, you're 27, or you're 28 years old self. So the third question, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity. My question is, um, with the current economy in Nigeria now, what opportunities are you seeing you know, with the present situation? And if you are starting today, like today now, with the hardship and everything, like what playbook would you use to execute and get to where you are? That's right. Good question. Very good question. Let me, let me look at the first one. He said, at what point right. do you stop or do you start making a change? Let me moderate. I have to ask, you know, I did beg you to say, let's stand. I'm with and you. he said we should stand. I'm with down. you. I have to stand now till the end. Let me tell you, there's no point you stop making money. That's right. Anybody who tells you there's a point to stop, then there's a problem. But there's a point for you to become more human. Mm -hmm. I've not left trading. I've not left what I'm doing. And I'm what you can call a politician. But for me, you have to be a humanist. You have to look at now, how many people can you build? What are you going to achieve? Mm -hmm. And everything. But at what point do you stop making money? No. There's no point. I like trading. I make profit every day and I lose money every day. 
you keep something that I can't give up. Not even for anything. And I see everything in life as profit and loss. Whether it's governance, people don't believe it. When I was governor in Anambra State, my trading aspect of me guided me. So because I wanted to see the value of everything. So if you said to me, for example, we were the only, we had a, my predecessor had but a lovely office, a lovely house in Abuja. So we had a governor's lodge in Abuja. We paid one billion for it, furnished it very well, and everything. And we had a, over almost 80 workers there. Whenever I come to Abuja, I didn't see the value of the house. I didn't feel it. And they would go and give the cook, you must have seen me say, they go and give the man who was looking after his 100,000 naira to feed me wherever I'm in Abuja. So I go back and I say to them, listen, hey, wait a minute. Buffet in Hilton is 5,000. <laughs> Why are we giving this man 100 and we have to buy plates, cook, wash, everything when we can go here and buy the same thing for 5,000? After about three trips, I shut the place down. I said, the governor of Anambra said, does not need a lodge in Abuja. It's costing us money. We can put this money into our education. Mm. Because everything for me is the same thing. I traveled three times with a troop of people for meeting. I'm going to Abuja. 20 people will follow me. And it will cost us so much. One day I said, listen, I'm the only person invited for meeting in Abuja. So why, why are all these people following me? Look at the cost implication. I called on Novo then, who was IG or police. I said, if I go to Abuja, give me three police. And I called the DG, SSS. If I come to Abuja, give me three men. They said, no, no, no. I said, no, no, that's police is police. Don't want that, that. I'm not, they're not. So we, I went to Abuja. What I paid them in my visit when I finished, it's not of the ticket that I buy for one of the 20 people that follow me. And when they go, I pay their hotel, they pay. So, what am I trying to say? You don't stop making money, but you start channeling the money into... People say to me now, oh, Peter Obi doesn't spend money. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, I'm supporting a school of nursing and on soccer where there's no such thing with over 150 million naira. I gave them just about 70 million in the past two weeks. For me, that's what money is meant for. That's right. Money is not meant for Peter Obi to go and take title and change his name that God gave him. My name is Peter Obi. If you call me Okute, that is your own business. But I'm not going to give you money for it. Oh. If you want, that's it. And again, so there's no time to stop making money. That's right. But there's a time to start using it to help other people who are there. If you go to a place they call Balogu, in trade fair, they will show you that people will be built hundred stores, but I don't own one. I gave each of them to one young man. As at the time I built it, it was 250,000 naira. Today, you can't buy that shop for 50 million. But those people I gave it to are ready to do this because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. That's right. So for me, it don't stop. The second person a asked a question. He said, let me go to that one. He said, what do we do today? Bringing it in this time. It's time that it looks difficult. Quite frankly, it looks difficult. But there's opportunities. People say to me, how are we going to change Nigeria? Every day, people say, Peter, what are you going to do this? Even this dollar, I'm telling you now. How are we going to change the rates? How are we going to do? Yes. There's opportunities in Nigeria today. That opportunities are in so many areas. Starting from, it just, again, it requires patience. It requires sacrifice. 
Today, the highest inflatory item or cause of inflation in Nigeria is what? Food. Every day. Agriculture. Yes. So there's opportunity there. Today, we have a situation where, again, because government is not organized, we're not doing enough exports. I just said it two days ago, everywhere. If you go to, I spent a week in Bangladesh, it will shock you. People who own small tailoring industry, they've been put in place where if you hear that they are doing garment export from Bangladesh of $50 billion, That's right. which is about our Nigerian entire export, they are doing it or just clothing. It is individuals that are doing it. If you hear that they are doing manufacturing in China and everything, I tell you what, one of the businesses I do as a trader, when I started importing it in Nigeria, it was manufactured by husband and wife. Only husband and wife in Singapore. I went to see a big man in his office. And he gave me tea, tea, to drink, tea, a particular tea. And I drank it. And as I was living, which is what I used to do when I was trading, I said, can I get the packet of this tea? He said, take it. Six months after, I came back to him and said, I came to give you this tea. Two cartons, because you helped me. I'm now the official representative of this tea <laughs> in Nigeria. And that's how. So there's opportunities, but it requires a long time. It requires sacrifice. Right. And it's something you must do, knowing fully well, listen, you're not going to be doing it and doing shift and sit title. You're not going to be doing it and be doing this or doing that and everything. As young people, you must do a lot of sacrifice. Don't think that this thing that I'm doing today, people see that and say, oh, Peter will be changed. I changed, yes. But I can tell you, go and ask people when I was in Osaka, I was a businessman and I was doing a little bit of clothing. <laughs> if I sell clothes to you, <laughs> if you don't pay, don't come to a party with it too, because there will be a problem. Maybe you, you have to you have to remove it from that party. <laughs> so anyway, I was diligent about it. I was careful. I was managing my pennies. I wasn't going to do parties. I wasn't going to do this. If nobody was going to drag me. So you can. There's opportunities. That's right. You can start today. It's going to be tough. Banks are not lending today. These are some of the things we want to change. We need this, thing, but the biggest problem SMEs have here, I can tell you, is there's no fiscal support from government. In the UK, where I would say I made money, bank were able to give me money without anything. Somebody said, what am I going to do to a 26-year-old? They say, well, my son, I have a son, he's 29. And I'm sure when I tell, because he lives in different parts of the world, he was born in the UK and he lives in the UK. And I tell people, since my son left the university, I have never given him one naira. And he doesn't want one naira from me. Because he has a job. He has a physical support for what he does. And he lives it. And we have that relationship. But again, like I keep saying, people have never seen me when I was governor. He was in university or anything. They can't see them. I can tell you a story. People were shocked. One of the days he came to Sukhani, he was in Keke. 
And somebody wanted to tell me why. And I said, that's what he wants to do. But if you look at me going to where, they, where we have, I was in Haiti when they had earthquake. I've been to Afghanistan. All the countries that I went where there's problem, he went with me. And I tell him, I'm the governor. You're not. You're just son of the governor. You're not the governor. Mm -hmm. Even if I have anything, you can only inherit it when I die. Because I didn't inherit anybody's own. So you have to struggle for your own. I'm sure I will die before you. Then you can inherit it. You know, but not while I'm alive. You know, so you can. A 26 year old start your life. Unfortunately, I must say it, it's difficult here. What? The system is against your progress. That has to change. Yeah. Somebody said, sparing my time to be here. Being here is more important than any other thing I have today. Richard. Because I don't know that you read my tweet a few days ago. I did a tweet a few days ago. I said 635, 6,355 Nigerians are worth over $5 million. They are holding assets. They are richer than 107 million Nigerians put together. It cannot continue. We must dismantle the criminality and bring it so they can have opportunity. I went to a bank in the UK. Mm -hmm. They didn't ask me for any guarantee. They didn't ask me for anything to guarantee my loan. You know they all they asked me? My certificate. Schools I went to. What do I want to do? When I finish, they approved the loan for me based on what they call intellectual capital and this. Here, you have to bring your mother's land, your father's assets, every, it cannot continue. Thank you. I'll call you Mr. Obi, I'm bold. So, Mr. See, what I hear him say is, um, you can't have soft life. Please, note that. If you make small money, save, 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 and be savage in dealing with customers. Am I correct? Yes. That's the street word. We have very, to very savage. Very, very careful. <laughs> know who you sell to. Save your money. Don't allow you. Don't. I say it every day. I have energy for money being spent or necessary. The things I can tell you, but I don't want you to do because it will be difficult for you. But I can tell you as a young man, I did all of that. Nobody today came to my wife, Karen. But I live with my wife and two of us are very close. But I didn't see the reason why our people should come and be drinking when we need the money to do something else. <laughs> so I say, listen, it's either what you know is that me and you will live for the rest of my life. That's right. I'm not going to sack you. But we're not going to call people to come. And then when I go, I become annoyed because I'll be annoyed with the money I spent on you. So it's better we save our money and have peace. Well, we so these are things I tell people. And you won't believe it that sell drinks. And I tell people that. Or people say, oh, hey, I've lost my mother. Or father, you're giving me a befitting burial. If my father wants the befitting they should keep money for the befitting burial. It's not to carry your life and go and do befitting burial. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Abroad, you save, you save money. I'm not saying you shouldn't bury people who die. Well, but you don't demand it on somebody who is alive. That's so true. when you finish that, you're owing everywhere. No. Somebody who is alive, if you want befitting, you save for it. We'll give it to you. We'll make sure we use part of it to bury you well. And that's what I do. And I insist on it. So when somebody says, hey, why can't you just bury this person? It doesn't cost you anything. The God knows you give him a befitting burial if you go to church and pray. But call people and be entertaining them in your difficulty. Capital, no. One last question. One last question. So please, in this life journey, right, there are regrets. There are challenging times. Can you just share with us 
maybe one experience that you regret that you could change the narrative if you had to go back in time, please. Thank you. Well, quite frankly, uh, people say there's regrets in life. I can tell you I don't regret anything. Okay. Because what do I say? I'm a Christian. And if there's anything anybody can tell you, I'm a fanatical Christian. And right. I believe in God. That's right. Everything I have is by his grace. So he can't give me everything that I need. But every day I can check what I'm getting and what I'm losing. And I said to myself, it's more. If it's more, what can I regret? Maybe going into politics. Because I was never a politician. I never had anything to do with this. And if I tell you my net worth the day I became governor of my state, people can go and see. What I would became, imagine living in a boardroom as a chairman of a bank. I was a director in about seven to eight quarter companies chairing three of them the day I was announced as governor. All I knew was go to board meeting, go for one retreat in London, South Africa, Cape Town. I never knew so many of villages that started visiting. And suddenly, I am not in a place where it's so difficult. I go to school, see children without the CDs and everything. Going to towns where there was one town I visited one day. Like I said, I'm close to my wife. There was one time I visited the Colobo family one day. To go to this place, it is from Osaka. This is something that won't take more than maybe Anambra West. This is a place that won't take me more than 30 minutes. It took me hours. I had to go above by the boat because there's no road to that place. How did I come here? Why did I get involved here? I recall my wife, who was then in England, telling me, Peter, do you miss me? I said, listen, if you know where I am, you won't be asking me this question. I'm missing myself. I say, do I miss you? I'm missing where I am. <laughs> so, this is what I found. But each time I said it's enough, I found out that, no, that's not what God wanted for me. He gave me a lot. So you must do, continue doing this. So I don't regret anything. Not that there's things you can feel, oh, well, this thing happened to you. It shouldn't happen to you, you know. But say, I'm not that person who prays and say, oh, why me? If not to you, who? <laughs> it's happening to other people, you know. So check people are less school with. Today, um, okay, where I'm even saying I want to be president. That's Some it. people are less school who are still looking for money to eat. So why will you regret anything? If you regret anything, you're, you're cursing God. I'm very happy. What I want to see is to see a society where this is not politics. I'm not desperate to be president of Nigeria. I'm desperate to see a Nigeria that works for you. Because we are now handing you over anarchy. I want the Nigerian where I went to school with son of my mother's mate. Their children were going to school with me. They were more brilliant even in school. And they were working for my mother. They were like a house help. Suddenly now, such things don't happen. So we want to build a society. We have seen societies that work for everybody. We are talking about innovation now. We are talking about game changing. These are the ones that will do the game changer. Absolutely. But they are not changing it because people like me have blocked the way and refused to go away. So we must be able to. And one day they must change us by force. 
so that they can have a way. Because that's what it is. That's why you see everywhere in the world, every 10 years, money changes hand. You have younger people who make more money, who are brighter, who live more life and everything. I lived in the UK when Margaret Thatcher was selling, privatizing everything in the UK. And she said, for every 10 to 20 years, money changes. And I thought it was a joke. Today I see in the UK, all the people who were there, rich people, Maswell, Hesitant, they're all gone. You now see young people who have much more money. If you go to Google, all the 20 biggest companies in America, as at the time I was going to Harvard and this thing, today they are nowhere. They are not even in the first start. It's all young people who are now in their t-shirts, talking about billions. It's no longer... So, so these are the game changers. And how we encourage them to do that game changing is critical. It's happening all over the world. And that is why we have to encourage you, don't despair. There's opportunities. You just have to look for that opportunity. You just have to sacrifice, be diligent about it. And work hard. You will see that it will continue to change. Don't follow us in this uh, uh, criminality call that we're doing today. No, 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 no. It won't work. Nobody ever makes money by crime. No. You will only waste your time. After some time, you lose everything. Those who are enduring are game changers. Thank you very much. Good morning, sir. <laughs> I'm excited. It's an honor to be in your presence this morning. Um, I have a question. You know, in the stories you've shared with us today, there is something that stands out for me. And it's your, it's your ability to be comfortable being unpopular, having your popular opinions, you know, um, not spending. They, they, people say you don't spend. And it's, you just said something now. You said don't give in to criminality, you know, it doesn't pay. But it's not easy. And I want to ask you, how are you able to be comfortable being, having your popular opinions? And, you know, it might not be, it may not, might not be easy. How, do you, how are you able to, you know, move on? Your policies, your decisions, they're not the popular ones, but you do it how? Thank you, very easy. Very, very easy. And I can tell you, you just have to be convinced yourself right. that you're doing the right thing. My greatest, I will tell you that my, I, will, I won't say it's my greatest supporter, but it's my supporter today. My, one of my supporters today is President Obasanjo. I'm sure you people know. Yes. We were never, as a governor, he never wanted to see me any day in his office. Once I come in, he will tell me, Peter, nobody's happy with you. All the people from Anambra are not happy with you. Because he knows all the big men. And I said, they are not from Anambra State. He said, what are you saying? I said, well, I didn't promise happiness. They can go and read my manifesto. In this life, we have people whose job is to make people happy. Don't we? They entertain us. If they want to be happy, they go to them. He wanted to come to an Anambra State. You must have seen me say this every day. Hear me say it every day. He wanted to come to an Anambra State. We didn't have a, a presidential lodge. That's right. Because we couldn't afford one. Mm -hmm. My predecessor started it and I stopped it. Said the president doesn't live here. But he insisted he would sleep in Anambra State. Said I should go away. I should must sleep there. I said, no problem. Mm -hmm. I called his chief of staff, called everybody, said, come. I have a place I live. Me. Come and inspect it. If it's good, I'll leave it for one month. When he goes, I'll come back. And they came. I said, it's good. I gave them the key. I told my wife, I said, listen, president wants to stay here, so we have to go to the hotel. When he goes, we'll come back. We went out for one week. 
It cost us 5,000 naira when we were building a house of almost 2 billion for him. So since then, when Jonathan wanted, I said, no, no, you have no place to sleep. You have to come and go. You are the president of Nigeria. You don't need to sleep in Anambra. Please. We don't have a place for you to sleep. It was very unpopular. People didn't like it. Yeah. President's wives, women didn't like the father that I stopped office of first lady. But we, it was costing us more money than Ministry of Education. They even have advisors for her. What, what are they advising her? No, you know, nobody elected, and two of us live in the house. She's the closest person to me. Me and her see every day, but they have a full convoy. They want her to be driving 22 vehicles in the morning. You know, they create herself with everyone running around doing nothing. I say, no, 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 no. What that means? We don't have money for this type of show. There's already enough confusion here. So add this one, no. Just stay here. Me and you are here. If you want to walk, you can come to my office. Because they say two of us are one, isn't it? If you want to walk, come to my office. But I have an advisor or advisor. What are they on? She has no role. But that's the confusion. ADC traveling with you from here. It's very unpopular, but my, my daughter, you have to do it. If yes. I come from Anambra to where it's outside, they call it outside this thing. So if I come going from Anambra to where people will follow me, 30, 40 people. One day I said, no. That's it. No more. So you take a right decision because it is. When I was campaigning for president, I tell people, those who are supporting me, and I maintain it today, please, if you're following me because you want to make money, for job somewhere. There's no money here. Peter is not going to take it. You're not going to take it. And I can tell you, and I say it any day, I'm determined to have gangs like you who will die changing this country. We can change it. Now this is the standing point. Standing ovation, you, please, people. Let's appreciate our very own Mr. Peter Obi. Thank you so much.